Today on Upfront, power grab or power reset? Together, all of it is a dangerous precedent. Our goal is just to guarantee that we have an opportunity to sit at the table, negotiate, and do it fairly. High tension in a bitter lame duck session. Next, the way forward. Can Republicans and Democrats work together after this? I'll ask Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald and Democratic Senator John Erpenbach. Plus, the chances new limits on early voting will end up back in court. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. To the victor go the spoils, except some argue in Wisconsin, where the incoming governor and attorney general will have less power than the current governor and attorney general. In three days last week, Republicans who control the legislature introduced new bills curtailing the authority of Governor-elect Tony Evers and Attorney General-elect Josh Call. Top Republicans introduced the bills late on a Friday, held a public hearing on Monday, and passed the bills early Wednesday morning after pulling an all-nighter at the Capitol. Evers, who said he wanted to work with Republicans, now might see them in court. We are exploring anything to make sure that this legislation does not get into, uh, get into practice. So what's next? We begin with Republican Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald of Juneau. Senator, it's good to have you back on the program. Good to be with you. So you've heard the criticism, you've heard the complaints. Um, yeah. Is this going to have uh, political consequences for Republicans in the months and years to come? No, I don't think so. I think as we make our case kind of statewide of just exactly what we did and how I think there are a number of proposals that fall into one category which are certainly we are protecting some of the public policy that's been passed through both houses of the legislature and signed into law over the last eight years. And then a second group, which are more innocuous, truly, I think, innocuous items that I think if, uh, if your viewers or if anybody read through them, they would say, doesn't seem to be partisan. It, it looks more like housekeeping. And that's the case we tried to make on the floor this week. When did you start talking about this with Speaker Voss and with representatives of the governor's office? Back in September, I think you could say, and I was just as concerned about, you know, could, could so we... These are not discussions that began after the election results? Oh, no, 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 way before that. I mean, there was concerns even about, you know, if we would maintain control of both houses of the legislature at that time. You know, in the Senate, we had lost a couple special elections, and we were at 18 seats, and, you know, we just didn't know. I mean, you didn't know where the political winds were going to go. So, no, those discussions started kind of in a very vague way back in September, um, back and forth between the Speaker and I. You've been called sore losers. That's the way Democrats are framing this, that you're attempting to nullify the, the will of the people in the November elections. What's your response to that? Uh, we won an election, too. Uh, both houses, uh, both chambers are Republican, will be under Republican control, and we're simply starting to realize that this governor, um, especially over the last couple of days, I think, when you see the rhetoric ramped up, he will probably be the most liberal governor the state of Wisconsin possibly sees. If you just look at his background, who he's already surrounding himself with, um, I am very concerned. And I think Wisconsinites should be concerned that in mid-February, when this governor rolls out his budget, it will be the most liberal document that anyone's ever seen. But people did vote for him. They did. They did. Slim margin. And like I said, they voted for us too, though. So I think the legislature feels like we need to just maintain a balance and protect a state that's in, a gr in great shape. I mean, whether you want to talk about the economy, the low unemployment, you can go on and on. Wisconsin is a great place, and we want to protect that. And I think there's a lot of Wisconsinites that want us to protect that as well. One of the hallmarks of Tony Evers' campaign uh, was him saying that he was going to take the state out of the lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of Obamacare. You've now made it basically impossible for him to do that. Again, the people in the state voted for someone who said he was going to do that. Are you ignoring the will of the people when it comes to that? You know, some of his rhetoric specific to, like, Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is alarming. Um, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about him but going about in there. what about the lawsuit? The I, lawsuit I, I think Obamacare. specific to the lawsuit, um, it's something that's going to be debated nationwide as well in, as in Wisconsin. If there is success with that, I think legislatures throughout the nation will react to that possibly with uh, some type of response. Uh, like we just had a discussion on the floor of the Senate uh, this week. Um, I, I think that'll be a nationwide question. I'm more concerned about some of the aggressive tone and the posture he's taken 
over the last couple of weeks specific to some things that really could derail the economy in Wisconsin. In what sense could it derail the economy in Wisconsin? We have so many projects right now that are underway related to the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, and he said he wants to not only do away with it, but replace it with the old Department of Commerce. That should be alarming to everybody, especially some local economic development officials that are now saying, wait a minute, we've got a lot going on here. And he just doubles down on the same concept that he wants to get rid of it. That should be alarming to everyone. I, I wanted to go back for a moment to the, the pre-existing conditions because one of the things that uh, Speaker Voss told me on this program that he was optimistic that there would be action on pre-existing conditions, at least providing some coverage for people in case the Obamacare lawsuit uh, is successful. Right. Um, that didn't happen. Um, why didn't it happen? And, and should uh, we be continuing to pursue a lawsuit if we're not providing at least some protection for citizens of this state? Should that lawsuit be successful? Well, it didn't happen because Senator Schilling, Senator Erpenbach, and other Democrats voted no. Um, I had a couple of members that I weren't exactly sure how they would vote on that proposal, but every Democrat in the state Senate voted against it, which doesn't match up with the rhetoric that they had during the campaign season. I think it's disappointing, and now we're going to have to regroup. I'm going to have to talk to Speaker Voss and see exactly where we're at. And, uh, you know, what do we do in January? Will the Democrats continue to, uh, to vote no? Should I be nervous if I'm a person with pre-existing conditions in the state of Wisconsin right now? I would say um, not, not in the short term, but I think if this is not handled, as I said earlier, nationwide, and if each state legislature doesn't have some options available to them, um, I think it's something uh, you should be nervous about because I think at some point you're going to have to address it. Another controversial uh, piece of the legislation that was approved is, is the limit on early voting to two weeks. Uh, why is that a good idea? The argument is more voting is good for democracy. Why are you limiting early voting? Same debate we had on the floor. We've already passed this bill. Uh, many people in rural Wisconsin uh, turn on their television and see people standing at the polls uh, 45 days out voting day after day after day but when they go down to their own town hall the lights are out and there's no clerk there that's uh, that's inconsistency and that that irritates people and I think isn't fair to rural Wisconsin it's the same discussion the same points we made uh, when we debated the bill last session so we brought it back we think it makes sense and I think, think it is constitutional it's fairness it's fairness it is I think um, I think the federal judge that blocked it before this this last election in November um, hopefully the tweaks that we made to that bill that uh, he now will allow uh, to become law in Wisconsin. Uh, one of the premises for holding the extraordinary session was to deal with Kimberly Clark. Uh, that did not happen. It was not discussed. What is going to happen with Kimberly Clark going forward? I, I think there's going to be some good news um, coming out on that. Uh, again, Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation continues to pursue and talk to Kimberly Clark to hopefully come up with a package. It won't be the same package that was part of that legislation, but I've got my fingers crossed that they're gonna be able to come up with something that's gonna keep uh, Kimberly Clark in Wisconsin. Final question, your relationship with Governor Evers going forward once he takes office on January 7th. What's gonna happen given what's happened in the last week? I think it'll be a, a back and forth like we've had with governors in the past. Listen, I got along great with Governor Doyle during the eight years that he was there. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping that Tony Evers dials it back on this very liberal agenda, and I think this budget in mid-February is uh, certainly going to set the stage, and I hope he takes that in consideration uh, before he rolls that out. Scott Fitzgerald is the Senate Majority Leader of the Republican. Thanks very much for being with us today. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Coming up next on Upfront, Democrats outrage, but what can they do to fight back? And later, new limits on early voting. Will it be the subject of a court challenge again? Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.